the ultimate Illuvium Arena PvP tier list. And we're gonna be speedrunning this. Why speedrun? Because we have a lot of Illuvials to cover. Little disclaimer, I'm gonna be talking about the current meta. But even if you tune in at a later stage, at a later patch, uh, you're gonna still get a lot of value out of this video because I'm gonna talk about the Illuvials in general as well. So starting off with the dash, Water Rogue. Water not very dominant right now. Rogue has been very strong throughout all the patches. But because it's a 45 cost unit, we're gonna put him in C tier. Usually you have better options that bring a little bit more value. Same goes for Rake, but because he's a Steam, he's even a little bit more useless because Water sees more use cases than Steam at the moment. Now we're coming up to Umber. Umber is gonna go into A tier. He has seen a lot of use cases with the Invokers coming up more, also Chiro with the Slayers coming up more, and also as a tech choice in many decks. It has found its way into more decks. Archie, very strong support, nature empaths, strong traits. Usually always gonna play this guy if you go for empaths. Then we got the Arcos coming down into D tier because we're either we play for Verdant, then we're gonna play Arcalion, or we're gonna play for Nature Empath, then we're gonna play the Archie. Arcos hasn't seen a lot of stage time yet. Arcalion was S tier last patch, but fell down to at least tier dispatch because we're not seeing any Aegis and we're almost not seeing any Verdant at the moment. Next up Vermilia, not very strong right now, we don't see it in a lot of decks but overall a very strong Empath unit. Air, Empath, really strong traits, very tanky for the 40 cost. Verminio hasn't seen much love at all so far and we're gonna put him in our first E tier unit. Then the Vermilier has seen a lot of use cases in Spordex, and we are also seeing in this patch Spordex coming back a little bit more. Scarabog will be our first S tier unit. It's one of the strongest tanks in the game throughout the patches, and a must have if you're going for five bulwarks. Goliath and Titanor have seen a patch in the last, uh, have seen a buff in the last patch, and now they are a little bit stronger, also with the rise of Science and. Uh, invoker decks they are a must-have in those two especially with um, Cardilux being nerfed this is the go-to frontline tank for now Kuka pretty strong would put it with Vermilia good air empath unit but right now we're playing Enchanter so we're playing more Kukulus Enchanter we'll put this into S tier Magma Enchanter decks right now are dominating the leaderboard Kukuraf was very good in the past, right now we're not playing it a lot. Ador, super strong, Empath, nice heals. Gonna put him right here with the Archie. Uh, Adorado is the same case like with Arcus. You're gonna either be playing the stage 3 or stage 1. Stage 2 hasn't seen a lot of airtime in the arena. Adorius is dominating the leaderboards because we have a lot of behemoths, we have a lot of burst damage right now, and Adorius is bringing that single target heal, so he's really good in the current meta, providing a little bit more sustain versus the burst damage. Flare, super strong tank, if you're going for fire, if you're going for bulwarks, you're gonna bring in flare. Singe right now, I would put him into S tier with the enchanter with the Enchanted Magma deck at the moment. Seer coming in a little bit below that, because if we're playing Behemoth, usually you want to go for the Bear, for the Chotun. And if you're going for Magma, you're usually going for 5 Bulwark with the Singe. Let's put Seer right now into high A tier, actually. Atlas, one of the strongest tanks in the game. 30 cost, Water, Bulwark, strong traits. Right now, Water is just not there yet, but as soon as it will be there, Atlas is going to be played again. Same goes with Karadulu that we're gonna come up to later on. Axodon has the same problem like the other stage 2 units. Either you're playing Atlas for the Water Bulwark, or you're actually playing Axodon right here for the Harbinger Tsunami. Usually you don't play the Axon a lot. Sometimes it comes in as a third Harbinger unit, but doesn't see so many use cases at the moment. Actually, let's bump those two up. Next up, Alfie, must have in your Scion decks. Big, big damage for big, big targets. Taking down the big behemoths, for example, or the big tanks. We're gonna put him in A tier for those Scion decks. Then we got the Sinulf. Invoker right now isn't being played a lot, but if you play Invoker, usually you play a Sinulf over the Dual F because Sinulf gives you water. And that buffs your other Invokers, for example, the 
Sephoros and also the Ophisto. And usually Ophisto or Dualef is being played. And right now it looks more like Ophisto plus Sinalf instead of Dualef plus Sinalf, for example. Next up, the Fern. Everybody's favorite trash bird, but actually not really. It's not being played a lot. You can still bring him in in the nature empath teams. He has the strong empath nature traits. And in empath teams, you would see him a lot. But Fernite is the same problem with all the stage 2 units. Usually you play either the stage 1 or you go for the Blaze Knight. Blaze Knight teams have been really strong. I don't think it's S tier right now, but definitely upper A tier sitting with those three somewhere. Lura, super strong tank, 40 cost, brings a lot of CC, nature and uh, earth. And Rogue is a very strong trait. We're gonna put him in B tier, Lolura and Malura. Since Bloom is dead right now, they are dead. And we haven't seen them being played a lot. Malura was a little bit in those behemoth decks, bringing in Vanguard with Slashin. But even in the last patch, we didn't play him a lot. And now that Slashin has been nerfed, I don't think he will be included into those behemoth decks anymore. Basically falling down to D tier. Fury, super strong choice if you're going for Scion, bringing in the fire and the Scion, two very strong traits that complement each other very well. We got the Furyox. I think we're going to see more Furyox on the ladder again because his damage oftentimes out damages the Scoriox with the fire. Scoriox right now with the magma, very strong as well though. So both of those two units, I would put them in A or lower S tier. Let's see if we move them on a little bit later. Next up, Tatopi, one of the weaker Scion units right now. Gonna put him right down here. Usually you're gonna be playing TNT because then you can activate the Granite with the Titan or with the Goliath. Same goes for Sephoros. So either you're playing Scions with the Granite frontline or you're playing Invokers with the Granite frontline. So those two both go in the B tier. Then we got the Squiz, everybody's favorite octopus. Squiz are gonna go into the B tier. You're gonna play with Scions, overall very strong unit. You also can play Shock Invokers, for example. And yeah, let's actually bump him up into A tier. Octius, same problem as the other stage twos. You're not gonna be playing him so much, either Squiz or Ophisto. Ophisto coming in here with the other invokers above the dual left because Ophisto is just providing a little bit more consistent damage, always hitting his targets and dual left oftentimes his laser um, goes far and he kind of lasers a half that unit or whatever. Ramphy, one of the strongest fire rogues, if not the strongest fire rogue, if you're playing rogue, if you're playing fire, you're gonna be bringing in Ramphy. Ramfire here, I would put him in S tier because Ramfire is just such a powerhouse. Not only because he's Phantom and Phantom is just the best guild on Earth, but also you only need Ramfire plus a range of weapon and you have a full counter, a full tech versus so many decks versus Scions, Invokers and so on. So I really like Ramfire bringing you a huge, very strong tech against many, many teams with just bringing in uh, like a few augments and weapons for the Inferno Phantom. I'm even going to put him right here in the front. Uh, Ram fight, same problem with the other stage twos. Not seeing so much airtime. But you're going to put him in usually when you play like a full fire Ram fire deck. You usually also bring in the Ram fight. Uh, so let's actually put him here into B tier. Mjol sees a big revival right now because the fighter rogue tactic for stage one... Uh, Wave 1, Wave 2, it's really strong versus the Chotun. So, Mjol, a really good fighter. Chokul, not that good at the moment. Chotun, definitely S tier. One of the strongest units in the game. There's a lot of counter mechanics now, a lot of counter decks like the Enchanter, Magma, and so on. But still one of the most consistent top four performers in the leaderboards. Ep, Good support, but usually it's a little bit too slow. And with the empaths, you have the late game anyway. You want to be strong in the early game. And app takes a long time to get started. Flood right here. Pretty nice with the Tsunami empath. Uh, very specific though for specific decks. And is not seeing a lot of use cases right now. Gaze here. Very strong versus AoE damage. A go-to Mystic unit with the Adorius. But usually we see this monkey a little bit more because he only costs 40. He provides the very good earth trade and usually you're going for double mystic with Adorius and Apon. 
even gonna put up one up here because those two are just in the best decks right now and sometimes you want to bring in gaze here in the late game next up we got the earth fighter monkey one of the best fighters in the game earth fighter really strong traits and his ability is really good where he does aoe damage gonna put him in a tier then we got the earth berserker not seeing a lot of berserkers right now on the leaderboard but this might change and when it changes uh, the monkey is usually gonna be picked over the mud berserker right here next up we got the earth empath Ipon. if you're playing empaths you're usually not going for earth so upon hasn't been played a lot same goes for exalted upon gonna put him a little bit up here usually uh, you're gonna go for the stage two so sometimes actually the stage twos are better in the current meta lesser gorilla rogue earth strong traits really strong omega ability leaving beh behind a illusion which is really good for overtime and also countering and um, cc'ing the enemies with the taunt of the illusion gonna put him right up there uh, lesser gorilla earth predator haven't seen a lot of him if you're playing predator usually it's gonna be the exalted gorilla with the mud rota super strong wind air rogue if you play going for air rogues you're gonna bring in rota let's put him up there uh reva or whatever his name is i've never played him and nobody i think has ever played him same case like with the other stage twos either you're gonna play the stage three or the stage one uh, Chiro right here is seeing a lot more playtime in the ladder right now and he's doing a lot of damage with physical attack damage stacking augments he can really carry you the game and i think we're gonna see a lot of more umber and Chiro on the leaderboards then we got one of the strongest tanks right now in the game heady if you're going for five bulwarks at the moment usually you go for three nature as in the last patches you would go for three um water bulwarks with atlas kara blue and Groko, but now you're going for heady and also for cling right now so those two definitely up in the s tier at the moment then we got the crunk bulwark wildfire not that strong wildfire at the moment but his ability blinding enemies around him is really really strong but usually you're just gonna bring in heady for that then we got the bloto aegis is not gonna be played a lot let's put him down in d tier twine really good verdant bulwark he's gonna see more i think um stage time in the current meta as we go on i think more people are gonna be using twine bulwark verdant really good traits let's put him with arkelion right here then we got the gnarl verdant colossus if you're playing colossus you're gonna be playing a gnarl um after the titan or usually and last in comes the karadulox then we got the slap in we got another water rogue and he also is a little bit too expensive for the value he provides he doesn't bring cc he doesn't bring any stuns silences disarms he just gets a bit of attack speed and he is really not that good at the moment stabbing same thing slash and has been nerfed a lot i will still put him in b tier he is basically one use case in a choton deck you bring him along to beat the scions to have an option against like scions and casters and stuff like this next up Kara blue gonna put this guy with atlas as soon as water is in the meta again those guys are gonna come back then we got Karadulu, Toxic Bulwark, not being played a lot at the moment, but could come back in later on. Same with Karadulux, got nerfed a lot, especially Toxic. And Karadulux specifically has been nerfed a lot as well. But if you blank losses, you're going to bring Karadulux. And he's not all that bad. Because Colossus is still quite good. Four at the moment used to be really good but now at the moment it's a little bit too expensive if you're bringing fighters you bring those 25 cost fighters usually and the 50 cost is just too big of an investment right now so we're gonna put him c tier Phoros is gonna go down into e tier bloom is dead and phosphorus is gonna go down into d tier because bloom is dead and also phosphorus has been nerfed a lot and no matter how much i try to bring back the bird He's just underperforming every time and really not worth 100 mastery points. Ripter, same deal as with the four, just a little bit too expensive for the current meta. If we're bringing fighters, they're usually low cost. Ripterus, Toxic is dead. 
gonna put him right here and Riplands might come back with the Berserkers coming back. So Riplands I don't think is all out of the picture yet, but those guys kind of are. The no trade links just gonna put him down here. Then we have the fighter links. Usually again just too expensive for a fighter. 65 uh, mastery points is just gonna be too expensive to bring for fighters. Not seeing him a lot. We got the rogue links. Same story with him. We have better rogues for the 65 cost that uh, rogue links is gonna cost. We got the stoic links. Tank Bulwark, we're seeing that a little bit more, usually in the late game, swapping out for Grokko. I don't think he's that good, but he can definitely bulk up your front line. Then we got the Empath Links. Again, we have so many good Empaths, and the Empath Links is just very expensive. Usually you're going to bring in like one or two, maybe a Water Empath Links you're going to bring in into your Empath teams. But that's kind of going to be it. We're going to put him in B tier. And move on to the Scion links. Very strong. If you're playing Scion, usually you bring those linkses, one shotting the whole enemy team. If you get a good line into them, we're gonna put them into A tier. Next up, we got all the tier zeros, and we're not gonna do every stage and so on. Just know that at the moment, usually with tier zeros, you play the stage one, the 25 cost, because it provides all those affinities classes for just 25 cost, and that's what it's all about. So Grokko. Probably the strongest tank in the game right now. Gonna put him right here. Up in the front. Uh, if you're playing Bulwarks, you're gonna be playing at least one Grokko. Probably two or three. And yeah, they're just very strong at the moment. Same goes with the Fire Dokers. Uh, with the Fighter. The Dokers. Uh, the 25 Fighter Dokers come in when you play Rogues. When you wanna dominate that early game, you're gonna play those Dokers. Um, same goes with the Volante, if you're going for Rogues, especially early game, <clears throat> you're gonna bring in the 25 cost Volante. Uh, Flish is one of the tier heroes where you're actually gonna bring in a stage 3 later on if you wanna maintain that Scion burst. Um, I think Flish is just the strongest Scion at the moment, there's no Scion deck where you don't play Flish, but that goes for all the tier zeros, right? There's no Rogue deck where you don't play Volante, there's no Fighter deck where you don't play Doka, and there's no Bulwark deck where you don't play Grokko. So I would probably put all the tier zeros just in S tier. They're just too strong at the moment, and then if you're gonna be playing Empaths, you're gonna be playing the Atipo. Atipo, I would say, goes down to high A tier, because he's really strong, but the other tier heroes kind of outperform him. And that's it. That's the speed run. That's the full list right here. We're going to zoom out a little bit so you see the whole thing. But yeah, it's big. There's a lot of Illuvials. And before I forget, the most important thing. Please click that link in the description down below. It's my Illuvium content creator link. You're going to support the channel. It takes 30 seconds. Whatever that hand was. It takes 30 uh, seconds, you click on it, you engage a little bit with the homepage and you would be helping me out a lot so I can make more content, so I can go full-time content creation and hopefully get better in speedrunning 15-minute videos in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like the content, click the link. I cannot say it enough. That's all I need. Screw the, screw the like button or the subscribe or whatever. I just need you to click that link. You can also create a second account. And then you can climb from a fresh account. That would even help the metric even more. Thank you for tuning in. Click the link. See you in the next one. Peace out.